A very fast recap here. Here we go. i is equal to the square root of negative 1. If we were to square both sides, we get i squared, which is just negative 1. If we were to make i cubed, we get negative i. Now, you've done this before, so I'm not going to explain why. All right, i to the 4, and we get 1. Now, if we do i to the 5, we go back to where we started from, and that's equal to i. So what you get is a nice little circle. i, negative 1, negative i, and 1, back around again uh, in lots of 4. Now, if you saw something like that, you could simplify it by saying that's the same as i times root 7, and you could write it a little neater than that and come up with something like that. So now, if you take some amount of imaginary stuff and some amount of real stuff, you combine them and you get a complex number, which we always use the letter Z to denote. Example here, our complex number is equal to 5 plus 7i. We can say that the real component of Z is equal to 5, and we can say that the imaginary component of Z is equal to 7. Not 7i, the imaginary component is just the coefficient of i. So this is a really simple idea. Two complex numbers are equal if their real components and their imaginary components are also both equal. This leads to an equation that might look something like this example. We might have some unknowns in a complex number. So Z1 might be 2A minus 3 plus 2BI and Z2 might be this. If we know that they're both equal, we can set them equal to each other. And once we've done that, we can say that the real component of Z1 must be equal to the real component of Z2 and the complex or the imaginary component of z1 must be equal to the imaginary component of z2 so this is equal to that and this is equal to that once you know that you can do some uh, grade 8 algebra and know that a is equal to 2 there now with this bit here we can cancel out those i's so we get 2b equals 4 and b equals 2 a and b both equal 2 that's complex number equality just get into some bread and butter stuff, adding, subtracting, multiplying, all sorts of things with complex numbers, complex number operations. If I want to subtract these, I subtract the real from the real and the uh, imaginary from the imaginary. 2 minus 1 is 1, negative 3i minus 4i is negative 7i. Addition, you just add them. Multiplication by a scalar works exactly how you imagine it would. 3 times z1 is equal to 3 times 2, which is 6, and 3 times negative 3i, which is negative 9i. Multiplying two complex numbers together works exactly how you would expect. It's this times this, which is 2, that times that, which is 8i, that times that, which is negative 3i, and then this times this, which is negative 12i squared. But then something strange happens i squared is the same as negative 1, which means that's negative 12 times negative 1, which makes it positive 12. So we get 2, uh, 8i minus 3i is 5i. That's now positive 12. And now I can bring those two together and get 14 plus 5i. Whenever you multiply two complex numbers together, this funky thing here is going to happen where if that's negative, it's going to become positive, and if that's positive, it's going to become negative because of that i squared. And of course, any complex number can be placed on an argand diagram where the real components go along here and the imaginary components go along here. So z1 would be 2, 3i, right there. Now, we can do some funky things to z1 to move it around or transform it on the argand diagram. If I were to take z1 and multiply it by negative 1, so I get negative z1, on the argand diagram, what that's going to do, if I draw a line like that, it's going to rotate it 180 degrees. Something like that, 180 degrees. And it's going to be here. Now, if I just did it, multiplied it by negative 1, you can see what I get. I get negative 2 minus 3i. And that's what we have here. So that's negative z1. But there are other things we can do as well to shift our um, complex number about the argand diagram. Taking z1 and multiplying it by i. Well, what that has the effect of doing is creating this as being 2i and making this uh, negative 3. Now, that makes that the real component now and that the imaginary component. If I put it on here, it's a little bit hard to see, but what it's doing is rotating anti-clockwise 90 degrees. And if I were to multiply this thing by i, 
I'd also be rotating it another 90 degrees because multiplying it by i squared is the same as multiplying it by negative 1, so I'd end up there as well. Now, these feel and look a lot like vectors, which means that we can kind of treat complex numbers as vectors, which means that some of the geometric operate or geometric interpretations of operations also apply here. If you were to take a vector and multiply it by 2, it would mean you were making it twice as long. If you take a complex number and multiply it by 2, it also means that you're making it twice as long, and somewhere up there is 2, 2z1. This also means that if you were doing addition of two complex numbers, it works the same as the addition of vectors. So if z1 is 2 plus 3i and z2 is equal to negative 3 minus i, we can do this kind of trick here where we say, well, there's my arrow for z1, z2, so minus 3, so 1, 2, 3, minus i, down 1. And we do this addition of vectors thing, but we do it with complex numbers. So speaking of vectors, we can also start talking about something called the modulus, which is really just the length or the magnitude of the complex number, and we do it the same way that we would find any other length of a vector. The modulus is useful because we'll talk about polar form a little bit later on. Uh, now, the other thing that I need to talk about really quickly while we've got our argand diagram up here is the conjugate. To find the conjugate, we simply change this sign here, uh, the sign of the imaginary component. So it's going to be 2 minus 3i. What this has the effect of doing is reflecting our complex number around the real axis. It's also really useful when it comes to division of complex numbers. You might end up in a situation like this. You don't want to leave it like that. You really want to express it as a real component and an imaginary component. Multiply top and bottom by the conjugate. Now when I do that with this simple example, we just get 3 plus 2i on the bottom. Now, this times this. The middle terms are going to uh, cancel out, and what you're going to end up with is 3 squared plus 2 squared. Now you might be thinking, wait, wouldn't I end up with negative 2 squared? But remember, those i times i is going to give you an i squared. You can do it if you want. Okay, so then that ends up being 3 plus 2i over uh, 13. Now we want to express it as a real component, 3 over 13, and an imaginary component, 2 over 13i. Done. That's enough for a very fast recap. I am going to do a polar form video uh, next up, but this was just to get our heads in the complex number space. You should know all of that stuff.